It's our honor again to invite our National President, Dr. Sanjay Kumar Jain, to address us. Thank you, Madam. And I hope she will be able to grant me uh, a few more minutes <laughs> for what my friend Roy saved for me, I think, uh, because I am allotted only 20, 15 minutes. You have uh, switched the clock to 30 minutes, so give me 20, uh, that's good enough. So good afternoon, everybody. Uh, all the respected people here in the, this auditorium, uh, Dr. Santosh John Abraham, who is the past president of the ASI. I will request my young colleagues to stay back for uh, further 20 minutes because my talks are especially targeted to them, the senior people, those who have achieved everything in their life. Uh, still, I will be learning that if I am missing something in my lectures. So I will request the young people who are standing outside the hall may please come inside and enjoy this. This is for them only. Uh, I have the two of the invited members, Dr. Raya Patankar and Dr. Praveen Suryavanshi, who is the National Executive Committee members uh, from Maharashtra, the, our own National Executive uh, Committee member, Dr. Rajan, Dr. Sri Kumar, Dr. Varghis, and Dr. Smile, the Chairman and Secretary of the Organizing uh, Committee and Chairman and Secretary of the Kerala State Chapter. At the outset, I would like to thank uh, the organizers and the Kerala chapter for inviting me and giving me opportunity to talk to my favorite audience that is the postgraduates and I hope they will decide at the end of this lecture whether although because of the shortage of the time I need to compress it and compress as much as possible after that this thing will not be compressed this will be crushed. So greetings from the ASI headquarters, which is the second largest organization of the surgeons in the world. And greetings from the city of lakes to the people, uh, another city of lakes. When I came here, I learned that Bhutan is the city of, known as city of lakes. Bhopal is also known as the city of lakes. So uh, today I will be talking about leadership in surgical training. And probably this is and that extension where uh, Dr. Roy left. So why, what this topic is, why we are discussing about it. So we all know, historically, we see Dr. Dayanand Babu, if he remembers his teachers, where he will say that I was always having uh, difficulty in even getting close to our teachers. There used to be an aura and we used to try to keep away from our teachers. That is probably, but we have seen their uh, stretcher and height. So historically, surgeons have took the sole responsibility for their patients controlling proceedings in the operating room with absolute authority, command and control style of leadership. Whatever boss has said is always right. Now there is a paradigm shift in the modern era from single provider based uh, treatment to a multidisciplinary team approach for most of the problems worldwide. And these new uh, domains, they require a collaborative leadership skill rather than trying to be uh, commanding others. Otherwise, what we will lead to is, are the conflicts and frustration and the patients, we all lose the patient either in terms of his physical presence or in terms of our financial gains. So what we need is collaboration of surgeons, anesthesiologists, intensivists, radiologists, pathologists, radiation oncologists, nurses, pharmacists, social worker, therapists, hospital staff, and the administrators. So now you can understand we are in a balancing act between so many people in today's world if you want to be successful. Surge is still 
the surgeon occupies a central role on healthcare delivery team and hence have the potential to improve the patient's outcome, reduce the medical errors and improve the patient's satisfaction through their leadership skill of multi multidisciplinary team. The points which I will be discussing today are one simple question, what, is we, what do we mean by leadership? Why we require leadership training? The fundamental principles of leadership? What are the levels of leadership? And why a person chooses to become leader? What are the various leadership styles? And finally, how to resolve the conflict, if at all it arises? There are multiple definitions to this word leadership. The very simple thing is the action of leading a group of people or an organization can be called as the leadership. But the uh, past ex-president of the uh, USA once said, you are a leader if your action inspires others to dream more, to learn more, to do more and to become more, what Roy was telling right now. So this is what, then you are a true leader. Again, a quote by uh, ex-first lady of the US, a leader takes people where they want to go, but a great leader takes people where they necessarily not want to go, but they ought to be. So this is how a great leader takes the people, whether even you are not thinking of it, so always listen to your mentors, they will be taking you where you are supposed to be, whether you want it or not want at particular point of the moment. Many a times we get confused between the leaders and the managers, because both of them are doing fairly similar job, but there is a basic difference and that is the leaders have vision. Leaders are visionaries, where managers are simply implementers. Leaders set goal for their team. Managers ensure the goal set by their superiors is achieved. So try to become a leader, not only a manager. Why this leadership training is required? In United States, we all know the Accreditation Council for Graduate Medical Education, what we call AG, ACGME, has established six core competencies. Each contains principles of leadership. There is no separate leadership training there, but each and every thing it requires. And the effective surgical leadership improves patient care, safety, and clinical outcome. When the group of residents were interviewed about their own experience, it was found that the most of the surgical resident felt a lack of confidence in multiple areas of leadership, particularly in conflict resolution. They report themselves as not competent or minimally competent in this regard. Now you can understand. So you may be a good surgeon, but supposedly a mob comes or a there are agitated patients attendant. It is you who have to resolve it. So you should also be prepare yourself to face such situations. Now again, why I am talking? We know for sure there are few leaders which are we say he is a born leader. So there is a question whether leaders are born or they can be made also. And the good uh, evidence suggests that leaders are born also, if they can be made also. So if we are not in the first category, select to be in the second category and become a leader. This is something very important for the surgery resident. Once we join our residency program, this is the time motion study. Now we can divide our works into two dimensions. Either we are doing service, or we are getting education. So there are jobs which can be of low service, low education, low service, high education, high service, low education, 
in high service high education so today we all are here what is low service low education like we are waiting during mandatory in house call there are so many times when we are simply sitting not doing anything waiting for something and there are neither we are doing any service nor we are uh, using that time for any of our educational purposes now today we are in a conference definitely this is very high on the education part but we are not doing any service to the community so these are the activities and once while they are very useful and they cannot be excluded so this is one what we need to concentrate are high education and high service things like operating with a mentor now you understand when you are assisting your good teacher you are learning from him and you are also doing service so this should be your aim to spend most of the time in these works this is another time uh, management matrix where it is done as per the importance and the urgency most of the uh, surgical residents the first year residents they spend their time in quadrant one task which is known as important but urgent so like when you are on uh, casualty duty you have lot of patients you do things mechanically many a times whether you are learning or not learning so this is something uh, we we are spending most of our time and this leads to typical burnout for the surgeons and after i think somewhere in the mid of the first year i think if not more at least 50% of the trainees they either regret or think of leaving the surgery and this is uh, my own assessment as being the teacher for more than 30 years in medical college so i will uh, say that we should move our focus to important and not urgent work like as you grow all you become focused for working in the routine theaters where you have planned operations your operating grounds so your focus should be shifting of course they should be important task but if they are not urgent you will probably use your time and why this time management is important nowadays everyone wants limited working hours if you have got limited 8 10 working hours in those time you have to finish all of your work otherwise what will be the result you will not have the work life balance you will get frustrated the post graduates they easily get attracted to either alcohol or some other kind of uh, abuses and this to protect yourself from this you need to i always tell my post graduates that this is the time in the life which you will this which will never return so you enjoy this but not at the cost of your own education or your primary goal what are the fundamental principles of the leadership a leader has to be a visionary this is the first step he should be effectively communicate with the post graduates i always try to make a bond with my uh, or the students i want to talk to so this gives a zone of comfort to ex so the student can express their problem and i am able to help them out there should be a willingness to lead there is should be a willingness to learn the process of learning is throughout your life till you die and you know i i feel uh, uh, very blessed even when after being the president of the asi when i came to kerala chapter i was knowing dr santosh john abraham is doing some exceptionally good work i spent a day and half with him in theater learning few new, new ways to do the things so this is how very very important and lastly you should be able to resolve the conflict what uh, again 
Dr. Raya said that there are various levels of leadership. I will not go into details. So level ones are the highly capable individual who makes productive contribution through talent, knowledge, skill, and good work habit. While the level five, which are the ultimate leaders, who are the CEOs of the multinational companies, very successful multinational companies, and these are the executives, build enduring greatness through a paradoxical combination of personal humility plus professional will. So this is, the word is humility, and this is what I think Roy has told when he was discussing. Now, what is vision? What you should think you will be doing? It is, we all have seen these kind of diagrams. So, first thing, what you are deeply passionate about, until unless you are passionate, I don't think you will go anywhere, or you will be just dragging and passing your life. Second thing, we are in the world, we have to sustain ourselves financially. So what drives your economic engine? So do not go to a, 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 a zone which will not make your daily needs to be get fulfilled or the desired lifestyle which you want. And third and most important, think carefully what you can be best in the world at. So leaders should be selective about where they expand their efforts and then they will be successful. One thing is very, very important is, and this is the analysis why it is important. And so if you start with why, this is going to hit your limbic brain and it is, there are more chances it is going to be accepted. Suppose somebody says that we want to start this thing, how it is to be done, like we want a new checklist to be enforced, how it will be enforced and what you have to do, definitely the question which will arise, sir is increasing our job, we are already overburdened, I do not know what is the need of it. But if sir says, if you remember in past one year, we have committed two such silly errors to overcome this. We want this checklist to be enforced. We all will be safe and our patients will be safe. This is going to be retained in your mind. So always start with why, not with what and how. Why to become a chooser? What is the requirement? Why you want to, I, I should be a leader, I am a follower, I am living my life help, happily? No. It is out of sense of selfless service. We do. There are many times question is asked, what is Santosh's interest? He is so active in his side. I will give a living example. I do not know what is his interest. I have not seen him gaining anything. Taking on leadership, for benefit of others, you want to help your friend, you become a leader. Or out of a desire to solve the problem, you do not like that this water is dripping every day. It is not harming me, but I am not happy with it. I want that it should be fixed. I will make a complaint and get this thing done. Effective leadership also have many individual benefits like recognition from one own peer. You can understand, you become, definitely become favorite of your senior and you will be recognized, you feel good. You will get promotion and you get an autonomy to certain extent. What are the leadership styles uh, which are known? So commonly, first is the coercive. We means we try to force everything about the whatever decisions we take. This is a command and control style and historically dominated the surgery field. This is often not effective in all these uh, uh, circumstances. Remember, there are six leadership styles and all are effective, but effective in a given uh, set of uh, system, not always. So you should be mastering 
all of them. This is also effective in case it is best suited for working in an emergency where your mentor will come, will say, take this patient to laparotomy, take this discharge, this patient, get a USG done, get a CT done. He doesn't have time to answer your queries at that time and it is good in the interest of everyone that you follow his commands. Second leadership is the authoritative, focusing on mobilizing the team towards a common grand vision. Leaders embodies the phrase, come with me, this style often is the most effective. So this then is the affiliative, leaders creates harmony and builds emotional bonds, frequently give positive feedback. Now you can be thinking, yes, these are the good leaders, soft. This style can allow poor performers to go uncorrected if too little constructive or critical advice is given. So we need to correct them. So although this is good for the majority, but we may be missing something in this. Then coaching focuses on developing people for the future. Coaching is leadership through mentorship. The coach helps people identify their weakness and improves their performance and tries their work into the long terms, this, their long term career aspirations. So definitely we know our mentors do. And democratic leaders forges consensus through participation. This leadership style listen to values of each member's input most appropriate and important it is obtained to team consensus and quells conflict and create the harmony. So if there is a conflict between the team members, I think the democratic style is going to be effective. And finally, the pace setters are the leaders set high standard for performance, exemplifies them. These leaders identify poor performers, demand more from them, and these leader will either take over the task by himself or delegate this task to the other. Oh, you cannot do it. Let uh, A do it. He is a better member. Or do as it I do now. This style need to burn out on the part of the leader. Of course, you excuse a person, he will be free. Now, if you carefully see, you have seen the, all these six types of leadership styles. If you imagine your leadership, your mentor, he will be a good combination of all these styles. Otherwise, he will not become uh, your mentor. So this is one. And finally, just a two or three slides about conflict management. We are living in a world when we are dealing with the team, conflicts are bound to arise. We cannot avoid them and we should not avoid them, but we should resolve them. So what is a conflict? It's a mental or a physical struggle resulting from incompatible or opposing need, wishes or demand. How we get involved in this conflict? either part of the conflict when we have fought with somebody or part of person trying to help or resolve conflicts between the others. You as the surgeons must have seen many a times that this person was trying to separate two angry young men and he being stabbed in, uh, except the person who was to be stabbed got free and this man who were trying to separate them got stabbed. So, but if it is your friend is in problem, you will definitely go. So, uh, as I have already said, it's a part of everyday life. It exists in our practice too. Can neither and nor uh, always should be prevented. Can the conflict has got one advantage. It can lead to learn more about the needs and feeling of the others and it should be resolved. And before solving the conflict, we need to identify the cause of the conflicts. Otherwise, very little can be done. And these are the main four causes of the conflicts. Whether the interest or the values of somebody are challenged, you will enter in conflicts. If you do not allow his or her needs to be fulfilled, there will be a conflict. You challenge his authority or power, the conflicts are going to be there or 
there is any misunderstanding many a times we get that there was nothing in the bottom but we were fighting for no cause so these are the main causes of the conflict what are the ways to resolve these are the five approaches to resolve conflict each very shortly i will discuss avoid oh there is a problem leave it now you can understand this way no conflict is going to be resolved so what is the end result i lose you lose second i am the boss i am the senior i dominate i am husband whatever i say is final i am the wife i am boss whatever I say is final or i will go back so these are the ways which results of course if the other party accepts i win you lose a person losing will never be comfortable accommodate okay whatever you say boss you are right what will happen you win i lose again you will never be your problems will be healed very late compromise okay we take a middle path so we all win a little we all lose a little but again nobody will be satisfied at the end so what to do the final way is the to collaborate and the end result is i win as well as you win and what is this collaborative style of approach of management of a conflict this approach requires innovative thinking and an open mind willingness to sacrifice time to reach the best solution this is the preferred approach since it pools individual needs and goals towards a common solution time does not always permits its ease all parties explore the ideas and opinions of the others and attempt to find out the solution that are agreeable to it and this is a win win situation for all so this is the and to conclude there are several styles of leadership which share common goal of improving patient care why i am talking here is not to make you a public leader is want to make a surgical leader so your aim is to improve the patient care all form of leadership require a vision willingness to take responsibility continue learning practice effective communication and resolve conflict surgical leadership can be bred through training program that's why we should be focusing on the programs which can develop and that is why i selected this topic for discussion today thus innovation in surgical training program needed to enhance the development of leadership skill in surgical trainees with this i end my talk thank you very much for patient listening and for inviting me for this talk thank you thank you sir thank you for that inspiring speech and we have a few announcements to make the mrs men and free One paper minute. session One minute. the winners One will minute. be announced thank you sanjay sir sir i invite dr mn sashikumar sir to honor dr sanjay kumar jain sir with a memento and a gift thank you sir thank you sir just announcing the mrs memon uh, free paper session awards first prize goes to dr deepika chandran star care hospital calicut the second prize dr shafa samsuddin mes medical college perindramanna and the third prize dr midun benjamin from astamims karnur move on now to the oration the prestigious mohandas memorial oration which will be delivered by dr shaji thomas and before that we may i invite all the dignitaries onto the dais dr santosh john abraham the past president asi dr bibin john chairman dr jane stephen secretary dr suresh r treasurer 
the EC members Dr. Rajan, Dr. Mohammed Ismail and Dr. CJ Burgess and Dr. RC Sri Kumar. We have the Mohandas Memorial Oration next. Dr. Santosh John, Dr. Bini John, Dr. Jain Stephen and Dr. Sureshar. Along with our EC members, Dr. Rajan, Dr. Mohammed Ismail, Dr. CJ Vargis and Dr. RC Sri Kumar. CJ Vargis. Sir, I think he stepped out for a phone call. Stepped out for a phone call. Can you push? Once again, uh, I'm addressing to introduce in whose memory this oration is instituted, Dr. Nalapat Mohandas. He hails from the very literally, literary family of Nalapat uh, from Trichur. He graduated from Kilpak Medical College, Madras, and uh, he went to UK for his further training. He got trained both in uh, general surgery as well as in orthopedic surgery. So he came back to Calicut to practice mostly orthopedic surgery and he was one of the leaders of ASI in the beginning in the Kerala chapter. You all know his sister who is a very prominent literary figure, Madhavi Kuti and his son is a neurosurgeon, Dr. Ajay Kumar and in he was a representative of ASA Kerala in the governing council in the past. He was the past chairman. I vividly remember his Rakhavajari oration, the tale of two cities and the saga of gold stones, way back in somewhere in the mid-80s. Uh, so in his memory, we have instituted this prestigious oration and may have the pleasure of inviting the orator for this year, Professor Shadi Thomas, Professor of Surgical Oncology and Head of the Department at RCC Quantum. Uh, Dr. Shadi Thomas got trained for MBBS at Medical College, Alapura, and took his degree from University of Kerala in 1990s. He joined at Medical College, Kotayam for his postgraduate surgical training and was awarded MS general surgery by the Mahatma Gandhi University in 1994. He moved to Medical College Trivandrum for his training in plastic surgery and finished MCH in 1997 from University of Kerala. Dr. Shaji Thomas had worked as registrar in surgery at Sri Uttradam Tirunal Hospital Trivandrum before joining the Regional Cancer Center as a faculty. He had moved up in the ladder of post at RCC Trivandrum and currently works as head of the department, Department of Surgical Services at the Regional Cancer Center, Trivandrum. Dr. Shaji Thomas is a fellow UICC and had done ICRETT fellowship for training in microvascular surgery, supported by UICC at Royal Canisburn Hospital, Glasgow. At my advanced microsurgical training at Ganga Hospital, Coimbatore, master's course in head and neck surgery conducted by Tata Memorial Hospital, Mumbai, and another UICC ICRAD fellowship for one month in National Cancer Center, Singapore. Dr. Shaji had attended many international, national, and state-level conferences and workshops as a resource person, and is actively involved in the teaching and training of MCH plastic surgery, MS DNB students in general surgery, and DND from several medical colleges in Kerala, and for MCH in Surgical Oncology at RCC Trivandrum. Dr. Shaji has many publications credited with large number of podium presentations and associated with a wide variety of research activities. The chairman, members of the executive committee, along with the entire membership of Association of Surgeons of India, Kerala chapter, feel proud and immensely privileged to bestow on Dr. Shaji Thomas with the Dr. Mohandas Memorial Oration for 2023. We are extremely happy to present Dr. Shaji Thomas for the oration titled Excelling in Head and Neck Cancer Surgery, a journey over 25 years. Thank you. 